Small business is about courage, risk-taking, independence, and we small business owners are survivors. Everybody has an idea for a business, but how do you take that idea from mind to market? This is the place to learn. Small Business School. It's a new kind of school. Together we'll learn about business from the inside out, from the people who've done it. We'll meet the men and women who are today's pioneers and quiet heroes. Their lives are the textbooks. Our classroom is the world. Small Business School is made possible by support from the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. And by Microsoft. We see you building a new company from an old company. We see a business full of potential. We are inspired to create software that helps you reach it. Hi, I'm Hattie Bryant. This is the place to learn about the chemistry of business. Every week we take you inside a company to show you how people turn their dreams into reality. At Diversified Chemicals in Detroit, everybody is excited about chemistry and the possibility of positively impacting the world through innovation. Right now, you'll meet the founders of a growing company who are dedicated to the future, to creating good work, to discovering and developing human potential, to solving problems, and to making the world a better place. Let's go to Detroit. Arnold Joseph and George Hill opened Diversified Chemical Technologies, Inc. in 1971, and today it is the holding company for four subsidiaries, Adhesive Systems, Codet, Diversified Chemical Technologies, and Paperworks. Together, the companies employ 200 people, 40 whom are chemists, and they generate 70 million in annual sales. This is did. George Hill. I was looking for a major corporation, you know, one of the Fortune 500. And Arnold, who's been my friend forever, uh, George, let's do something, let's do something. No, I got a wife, I got a kid, I got a mortgage, I can't do anything. Okay. Set in on a little session on how the SBA operates. It happened to be a session on chemicals. So I says, oh, Arnold said we should go into chemicals. I'll see what this is like. So I sat down, I filled out a form. They sent a bid in the mail. I showed it to my friend Arnold because I put down my name and address as, as uh, being interested or involved. He said, hey, we can sit down and we can make this happen. This is Arnold Joseph. We put in a total of $4,000 to begin with. This goes back to 1971. We leveraged that with an SBA loan. I think it was $70,000. A loan that we ended up repaying. Well, they and, don't, the SBA and, doesn't give out any money. And, they only back loans. Absolutely. That was made by a bank, a local right, bank. Right. And uh, we convinced them to make the loan to us. And I think we made a profit right from the first year. And what we did, yes, and what we did is we paid our taxes, took our, pro our retained earnings, and plowed it back into the business. So your wives didn't say, where's the money, honey? No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. Because they knew that we had a dream, and we worked to make it happen. And that's the way we've always grown. Today we have very substantial lines of credits, but we have very little exposure and uh, it works. It makes it comfortable for us and for our employees to know that their back, our backs are never against the wall. Early on, the two committed themselves to revitalizing the urban neighborhood of their childhood. The race riots of the 60s had scarred the city and thousands moved to the suburbs. George and Arnold purchased and brought life back to abandoned buildings. And what we found is that it worked. It gave us ready access to workers who could take buses to work. So we found that there was a pool of employable people. We found that we were purchasing real estate that no one else wanted. But at the same point in time, the banks wouldn't mortgage, so we paid cash for it. We'd always been conservative. So in spite of the fact that we lost that major customer and it scared our bank half to death, we still had a lot of cash flow. We had not done anything other than plow money back into the business, and conserve our dollars. So we were able to pay our bills. Therefore, you learn to keep cash. It became apparent to us that if we wanted to grow the business within the larger scale customers that we had access to, we had to do more than what we were doing. Okay. 
And we did. And we established Coded. And we started with one product. Which, which was? It was an all-purpose uh, universal sealer. And since that time, we've added about 25 different products to it. And we probably have another 25 in the hopper. Everything we do in all of our manufacturing areas is batch chemistry. A little bit like baking a cake. A little bit of this, and a little bit of that, at a certain temperature, at a certain flow rate, mixed at a certain rate of time. It's like putting something in the oven. Okay? Then it comes out of the batch at this particular point in time. And when it is finally going into its final process, which is taking the air out of it, it, it goes to an automotive manufacturing plant. Okay? And that's the oven, because that's where it gets cured. But it goes on the car, on the floor pan, what you call Z-part up under, under body coating. But it goes on the car, okay, in the plant. It's cured through heat. And that heat makes it rigid, hard, final, etc. It makes the car rust proof or whatever. It provides the car against leakage. It provides structural support in certain parts of the car. Around the floor pan, around the headlamps, almost any place on the car where some portion of the substrate, metal is coming together, or plastic to metal is coming together, or aluminum to steel is coming together. All those things require closure and sealing. And that's our business. We're making sealer at this point here. Jimmy Cannon watches carefully. You're the last person that sees it? I'm the last person that sees it before it goes out the door. And if it ain't right, it don't go out the door. Put on the automotive. At Codit, they also make thumb grade sealer. Yes, All right, tell me why people need it. What this does is when uh, they put this in the plant and on the cars, sometimes they'll have a hole in the body. Yes. And they use this to fill the hole. They take it and they put it on with their thumb like this, flatten it out, fill the hole, then it gets baked, and then they can paint over it. We are your answer for everything that falls into organic, inorganic, and polymer chemistry for these kinds of product lines and processes. Sonny George is the technical manager at Coding. Our policy is, you know, quality policies itself is we have to exceed the customer's requirements. That is our um, quality policy. So everything we produce and we sell, we make sure that it meets the customer's expectations and exceeds the customer's requirements. Another company got started about that time, and it was called Paperworks Inc. And that was interesting because every summer we would make available a couple of jobs at Diversify Chemical for college kids who would come in and work during the summer. Well, there was an automotive downturn, and when our guys went on vacation who were involved in manufacturing, we were happy to see them go to take their vacation because in reality there weren't any orders. But at the same time, we bought a copier. And there was a friend of mine who had a printing operation. And Xerox was trying to sell this paper for $35, and he was buying paper for $20. So we turned to the two college kids, and we said, you know what? We'll set up a paper company for you. And whatever you sell and whatever profit you make, you're welcome to keep. And we put in a telephone line. We established the company. And lo and behold, one kid made $1,900 for the summer, the other one made $1,400, and then we forgot to close the telephone line. One thing led to another. Today, we have Paperworks, and between itself and the joint venture that it has, I would say there's probably $35 million worth of business, maybe 40. And that's, that's America. Adhesive Systems makes the glue that holds together the packages for many products, including Miller Beer. This particular product that comes off the pelletizer, okay, okay, this is something that flows much, much better in certain kinds of systems. We're always marrying our product to a customer's process. Okay. And all the processes are different. Okay. okay. So what who, what customer is getting these little pellets? Well, right now, Miller Brewing gets this one. Okay? Miller Brewing. Brewing. What will they do with this? This goes into a system, okay, yep. and it flows beautifully like marbles, and then it goes into a melt process okay. and becomes liquid, and that in turn is applied to packages and the box. boxes. So when okay. I take Miller off the shelf at the grocery store. If you're strong enough to pick up a 24-pack, okay, it's not going to break because our glue is on it. That's right. 
That's right. That's Simple right. as that. Claudia Nicholas is corporate quality manager. I have PhD in engineering. I'm doing the PhD in quality. So you love school, right? I used to. <laughs> in the years 1981 to 85, George and I went through revolutionary evolution. We demanded both of the business and ourselves to reapproach the way we were conducting ourselves. Okay. Prior to that time, we sold based on our personality. We did not sell on the basis of technology. What was the big insight, the light bulb that led you to do the reinvention, the internal revolution? You have contact with all this major industry. You recognize that you have access. Personality only goes so far. And then you, you, we were confronted with a challenge and we surmounted it. We said, we capitulated. We invested into ourselves in a big way. We insisted that we be more creative, more innovative. We insisted that we hire better people. What is chemistry? It's all about basic structures, the building blocks, bonding, coherence. Up till now, whenever we went to industry, we had to put the investment not only into research and development, but also into manufacturing up front. We finally established a base. Industry accepts the fact that we may have some level of sophistication and maturity. So we just received our first contract, a long-term agreement with Vestion that makes use of this new technology for making rubber parts for the heating and air conditioning system on cars. And we were fortunate enough to receive a six and a half million dollar contract and now we're putting the plant together. Here what we have done is we have incorporated the recycled particle, rubber particles. Dr. Rajan Idera, who received his PhD in and chemistry right here in Detroit, is vice president of research and development and is in charge of the lab. Part. So we have increased the efficiency of manufacturing tremendously and, uh, and you're by using, using, using the recycled material. And the part weight is about 65 to 70 grams. So it's um, half the weight? Half the weight. Through the ingenuity of Dr. Idera's team, Diversified Chemicals is making a part faster, cheaper, and better. While the old part uses virgin rubber, the new uses recycled. While the old requires 15 minutes to set at super high temperatures, the new sets at room temperature in just one minute. So you hit a home run with this? Yes. This is all uh, conceived here in this laboratory uh, through the discussion of people. So that's where uh, our open-mindedness uh, yep. uh, helps people come up with ideas where we can uh, uh, implement into practice very, very easily. We are a magnet for talent. And given that we are that magnet, we are the recipients of the best that they have to offer. Traditionally, immigrants coming to this country had a tremendous work ethic and mindset. That's what they bring to us. I only wish we could clone George and Arnold. The cities across America would be transformed. There are so many lessons we can learn from them, but really, this is what they taught me. George and Arnold looked at each other and said, we don't want to be sales driven anymore. We want to make a bigger impact on the world with our lives. Sales driven, that's all I've ever been as a business owner. And most of us are addicted to it. In 1980, George and Arnold decided to stop being sales driven and start being innovation driven. That's when their lab stopped being on the sideline and started being at the core of the company. That's when recruiting scientists with PhDs and master's degrees became a priority. And that's when they saw a big vision for their company and that vision has been guiding them ever since. Do you need to stop what you're doing to create an even greater opportunity for your business? For George and Arnold, it meant they had to stop being sales driven and start being innovation driven. To read the entire script of this program, go to smallbusinessschool.org. This is buzzing. I watch director of local accounts, Julius Gray, arrive at the office. Never take no. Never, never give up. 
Did your mom teach you that? Persistence pays off. My mother taught me. My father learned lessons many places. You don't need to experience everything in life to learn from other people's experiences. So that's the key to it, grasping other people's experiences and applying them when it's appropriate. Like Julius, Arnold is running. He doesn't have an office, so he can be anywhere, anytime. Even though you have to make profits and you have to be businessmen, it doesn't dismiss the fact that you can have moral values, you can have ethics, and you can have the desire to renovate and to be an uplifting spirit within an area. What we have done on a consistent basis is to take over literally abandoned properties and bring them back to life. We don't sell them. We continue to use them. They become an economical method of establishing a business that then creates employment, technology, and growth. And really, it's who we are and what we want to become. It's what we want to share with others, because if we can do it in our own small way, others can do it in a much bigger way. So we started out with an organizational structure that says, okay, we've been the focal point. We're shifting that focal point and that leadership and some of the PNL responsibility, the proper loss responsibility to you. We're saying to you, our commitment is to teach you what we know. Therefore, there's a new organizational structure in which every one of our businesses is led by a different person, call it business unit manager. Call it a vice president or general manager, but we call it a business unit manager. Cheryl Kern is the business unit manager for Paperworks. I'm glad to be here now because we're going to be able to shine, for lack of a better word, and to really show this business unit manager's concept is really going to allow us to run the entire operation, which in the past we really weren't empowered to do, and we're really going to be able to stand on our own to either succeed or to fail, with those guys still on the side giving us a lot of guidance, but still we can run our own show. To achieve her growth goals, Cheryl is working closely with the director of the IT department, Dennis Mason. I'm the MIS manager here at Diversified Chemical. The exciting part about being at this particular company is the opportunity to take a small company, minority business supplier, and take them to the next level of being e-commerce ready. The top question is, how savvy are you from an e-commerce standpoint? And if you're not, you don't even get the opportunity for the business. What we have done is we have chosen to build not only incentives into our system that reward creativity, but we have taken what we consider to be some of the best people from all over the world who may not conform to what present America defines to be a American and given them a place to work that allows them to be creative, that allows them to be respected, we don't ask them to be anybody else but who they are. This place gives you an opportunity to grow. We send folk to school. It doesn't matter whether they're in manufacturing or they're in accounting or they're in our laboratories. They get an opportunity to capture what is best about America. It's as if the world converges in this special place. Carol from mainland China, Rajan and Bijou from India, Alex from Latvia, Ruben from Ghana. I had my master's in economic aspects of polymer chemistry. It's a blend of chemistry and business administration. And you got that degree here? Yes, from this company. Actually, the company paid for my tuition. Oh, really? And, and textbooks also. One day I was working in the midnight shift, and the vice president of the company, Mr. Arnold Yosef, called up. And he said, have you thought about having your master? I said, yeah, but I have to find a way to pay for it. He says, how determined are you to get your master's? And I told him, very. And he says, don't worry about the cost. It's done. It's always right to talk about making the kind of profit to give you and your family a sense of security and a sense of well-being. Okay? Nothing wrong with it. That's American capitalism. But I think if you start focusing on that, then you miss some of the real fun and the real joy of being in business. You, you miss part of the creative part of the process. I'm not an artist or a musician, but creating wealth in the community and creating jobs, and not wealth for Arnold and I, but wealth in the community, okay? 
and creating jobs is something that we're capable of doing. We're able to, to sell ideas to people that says, okay, we're going to give you business, and out of that comes a lot of jobs and even more to come. So I, I think that, that if you are in a position to build something, and if you enjoy that, okay, the money will come. It's not about the dollars. It's really about the building process and the achievement process. Today, I provide vision. Many of the products that we are coming up with were as a result of the directive or the guidance that I provided. When you're surrounded with PhDs and people with master's degrees, it's easy because you can say, I see a need, let's sit down and see whether we can truly develop a product that meets the need. And invariably, we do. And then it becomes infectious. When, a, when the chemists realize that they can be creative and inventive, they bring it to you. My first job was right over there at Michigan Bell. That's right, only right. two blocks away. Okay, so Lifetime friends. They met at Cass Technical High, the citywide college preparatory school, and graduated with the class of 58. Today, they wear thick rubber soles because their feet are worn out from standing on concrete floors. Well, the old homestead and our facilities and Glazer Elementary are all within a six block circumference from each other. And what we have here is an elementary school where according to the principal, Dr. McMurtry, 75% of the students either come from one parent families or are below the poverty line. And what this school represents is an opportunity for our company to become involved in the community in yet another way because it's our employees that are involved in addition to the company. Then we supply tutors and mentors and money that allows them to actually have access to things that they couldn't ordinarily afford. Now what is it that you said the principal came to you and said, Arnold, what we need most is? Men. Yes. Men, males. Men to mentor, to, to teach. To mentor, just to listen to the students. And we're going to really expand on this this coming fall because this, this is the way you change America. We had no mentors. My father was a butcher in the slaughterhouse. Arnold's father was a carpenter. My mother always taught me to do my very best. She taught me to get an education. Um, she, was, she was one of those people who really believed very strongly in me and felt as though if I put my mind to it, whatever I wanted to do, I could do. And that's one thing she did tell me. Okay? She so actually said those words to me. Anything you. that you think you want to do, you can do. If you were to ask me 30 years ago when we started that we were going to have all this, and, and that we're really going to sit down and say, not only is, is this wonderful, but in the plan that I rolled out to my key managers that we talked about earlier, we have a very clear vision of tripling the size of this business in the next four and a half years. We are looking forward to a real ride. How did you get here? It's called the force, Hattie. It's called the force. I don't say it's genetic, but it's either in you or it's not in you. In the case of George and myself, it was in both of us. It allows you to have the force to take on adversity, to mount it, and to be successful. And I will categorically tell you I don't think they can teach this in a business school. It is either there or it is not there. I only hope I can pass it on to others. But I will tell you, we have had our backs to the wall many a time, and it's that force that allows you to continue and to be successful. George and Arnold have achieved their dreams, but not all of them. Shifting to innovation as their priority has given them the foundation to make a big business sized donation to the Detroit Science Center, to organize volunteer efforts for their neighborhood elementary school, and to fund advanced education for many. Their focus and discipline has rewarded them in the past, and we bet it will reward them in the future. Do you need to stop what you're doing to create an even greater opportunity for your company? For George and Arnold, it meant they had to stop being sales-driven and start being innovation-driven.
There are over 15 million one-person companies in the U.S. Michael Griffith, owner of Griffith Productions, is a company of one, and he has a great technique for speeding cash to his mailbox. He sends bills to customers when a job is complete. He doesn't wait until the end of the month, and he makes it easy for customers to pay quickly by including with the bill a stamped addressed envelope. Michael is our San Diego-based cameraman who has been a profitable company of one for 14 years. And his checks are in the mail. Small Business School is made possible by support from the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. And by Microsoft. We see you building a new company from an old company. We see a business full of potential. We are inspired to create software that helps you reach it. If you want to learn more about starting, running, and growing a business, come to our website, smallbusinessschool.org. There are streaming video and interactive study guides. The only way we can compete with big business is to be faster, smarter, and better. We are the engine of the American economy. We create the jobs. Small business is about big commitment. It's about sacrifice and struggle. But we do it because we say, if I don't do this, my life won't be complete.